Hey, if you're thinking about moving to Las Vegas and you're kind of worried about the cost of living and if you're going to be able to afford it, stick around for this video because in this video I'm going to give you a cost of living analysis and then at the end of it maybe you'll have a better idea if it's going to be more affordable for you or not. But either way, I think this is going to give you some great information about the potential move here. So we're going to start right now. Okay, so before we jump into some of the costs, let's start with what you might be earning as it's always a good place to start with what you have and then see how, how far that goes and how much is going to be left over at the end. So if we look at the average household income in Las Vegas, that's around about 86,000. The median, which is worked out slightly different, that's actually just above 62,000. So depending on which way you want to go with your mathematics, then that's the way that, you know, that gives you a number at least to start with on average. And I'm hoping you're above average. I'm hoping you'll be up there in the higher numbers. But if we're just looking at average, then that's what the numbers say that it's going to be. If we're looking at minimum wage, it's going to be 1025 with benefits, with health benefits, and 1125 without. Hopefully, you'll have an employer that's paying more than that. And that minimum wage is going up this year as well. So... As of now, it hasn't. So as of now, it still is 1025 with benefits, 1125 without benefits. But that just gives you a rough idea of the averages. And, you know, we're going to move into the housing costs next because that is obviously one of the most important costs. And probably the bulk of your money is maybe going to go on your housing costs. So if we're starting with 86 or just above 62, we're going to see now how far that goes and what that leaves you with, hopefully some at the end. Okay, so if we look at housing costs, and if we start with buying a home first to begin with, then we'll have a look at rentals after that. But if we look at buying a home, the median home price in Las Vegas was around about 445000 um, as of the stats that I got last month at the end of May. That, again, gives you an average. Now, obviously, there's going to be different variables that go into that. If you're looking at a different community, maybe somewhere like Summerlin or Sky Canyon or Southern Highlands, maybe it's going to be above average. If you're looking at a home maybe in um, Paradise or maybe in Whitney or maybe in Sunrise Manor, then maybe it's going to be maybe a little bit below average. So just always bear those factors in mind. But the medium was around 445. Ironically, the average, which again is always worked out differently, was around about 560,000. You can take those stats either way. Um, but that gives you the, the average or the median. If you're looking at, if we look at the 445,000, if you were to, to finance that and get a mortgage and you put 20% down, using the current interest rates that we have at the moment at the time of filming this in June 2024, the average monthly payment on that is going to be around about 2,800 a month. So 2,800 a month for a home that's worth 445,000. And that's with you obviously put in 20% down as well. Obviously, another cost that's going to be involved is going to be your homeowner's insurance, and that's going to be around about 1200 a month on average again, D depending on if it's a new build. Sometimes new builds are lower, and obviously, if the home is older, then it might be a bit more. So again, you need to, to factor those in. But if I'm looking at an average, then it's going to be around about 1200-ish um, a year. So that obviously comes in, that's going to be broken down probably monthly, you'll pay that monthly as well, but around about 1200 a year-ish as well. If we were to go back to the, the median home price of 445000 I read an article somewhere, I'll try and pull it up if I can. It actually said that to, the income needed to afford a average price home in Las Vegas is going to be around about 110000 a year, which is obviously, you know, that's the, you know, depending if you're financing it yourself or if you're going with a partner, um, but that's obviously, to the outset, that obviously seems quite a lot. But then I, when we looked at the averages, the average household income is 86000 So it's not too much off that as well. So just obviously have that in mind if you are going to be going the finance route. That's the, the average income that you would need, I guess, to, to qualify for a loan of that amount. If you're looking at rentals, because our rentals are also quite quite steep as well. So if you're looking at, a, let's say, a, a, bed, a free bedroom home, say a standard house, um, that's going to probably rent for about 2300 a month. Um, it's not going to have anything fancy, no bells and whistles. Some apartments, maybe one bedroom, two bedroom, they're probably going for around fifteen to 1800 a month as well. And again, there's going to be different variables no matter where you're looking within the different communities. One thing to mention, one thing, sorry to mention at the moment, is that the, the market is still very low on inventory. 
There's a lot of new sales going in terms of new construction, but if you're looking at the resale market, it's very competitive. If you're looking at a home that's in a desirable community, if you're looking at homes that are you know really well looked after, maybe they've had renovations done on them, some, some of them have been put modern touches on the inside. If those homes are priced correctly and in the right area, right access, then they are going very quickly. Uh, a few weekends ago, I was out looking at homes with one of my clients and we looked at a few homes and boom, they had already gone by the time we decided if we we're gonna write an offer. Multiple offers, it was going best and final. Uh, so just bear that in mind, it is a very competitive market still. This time of the year is always the busiest time of the year. Interest rates haven't come down yet, which is why probably there's a low inventory level on the resale market, as why would someone give up their, their really good mortgage rates that they've got? unless they have a need. So if they do come down, it will definitely help the inventory level, but then there's so many people waiting on the sidelines that it's gonna be a frenzy, I think. So just bear that in mind if you are thinking about buying. The next cost to mention is gonna be utilities. And I think we actually rank probably 41 out of all of the states. So 41 out of 51 states for the cost of our utilities. If we're looking at the average cost of gas and electricity, it's gonna be around about $250 a month. Now, obviously there's gonna be seasonal adjustments to that that's gonna affect that. Your electricity is gonna probably be higher in the summer. Your gas will probably be higher in the winter, depending on your usage, if you have pools. Those type of things are gonna play a factor in it as well. But if we're looking at the average, then that's $250 a month. If you're looking at your water and sewage, then that's gonna be about 100 a month. Again, if you have a pool, expect your water to be a little bit higher. Trash is $50 per quarter, which I believe works out around about 18 a month, possibly. Uh, my maths could be off there, but I, I believe it's around 18 a month. So 54 a quarter uh, works out at 18 a month, but you get billed for that per quarter. Basic internet, now Cox is the main internet player out here. There are other ones like Sentry, um, but Cox is the biggest one in terms of internet and of cable as well, they really do. Um, so they sort of have a monopoly. I will say they are more expensive than a lot of their competitors, but then their service, we don't really have any outages and we have a, you know, we have their unlimited um, internet as well and probably one of their fastest packages. So basic internet is gonna probably be about $100 a month. I believe we pay about $170 a month and we've got, you know, an upgraded package on that as well. But the benefit of that is there's been no real outages. If there are outages, it tends to be like really, really late at night. It's not like we're during our working day. My wife works from home. She's a medical interpreter. So she needs to be on camera interpreting the whole of her shift. So she needs a real solid internet connection. I work from home, whether that's doing business stuff or uploading YouTube videos, I need a good solid internet. And then we have five kids that need entertaining. So they definitely need internet for their switch, for their TV, for their devices as well. So we, we've had no issues with Cox. I know some people complain about it. The only complaint we have is the price just keeps going up every year and they just keep jacking it up. So other than that, I don't think that Cox is too bad. Total average utility cost. So when you add all of the utilities up, it should be around about 460 a month, um, which isn't too bad and probably is why we rank 41 out of uh, 51 states. Some homes do have water restrictions, so that's gonna be something you need to look at as well. You'll see it when you, uh, when you get your preliminary title report and it'll show there, but some homes that used to maybe have grass, they would have took an easement from the Southern Nevada Water Authority and uh, the water district, and they would have been given a payment to take up the grass, which would have then obviously been saving water. And if you were to buy one of those homes and then go to put a pool, um, there could be an issue there as well. So just definitely bear that in mind. But hopefully that gives you a rough idea of what the average utilities cost. The next cost that really to talk about is going to be taxes. We all know we have no state income tax. We're one of the, the few states that actually do have no state income tax. And that offers a lot of people the chance to save money automatically from coming here. So it obviously plays straight into your, your cost of living. It gives you more disposable income depending on where you're moving from, maybe you're moving from somewhere already that has no state income tax. But I know a lot of the people I talk of to, they always tell me one of the other reasons that they're moving here is because of the no state income tax and they're gonna save X amount per year just because of that. Maybe they're still working from home, maybe they're being able to still operate their business, but be taxed here because they're gonna be living here. 
whatever the scenario, a lot of people do save money from, you know, if you're moving from California, if you're moving from uh, Washington, Oregon, New York, all those places have quite high taxes. So you're going to save money that way there. The one tax then that really gets caught out and people seem to forget about it. And for some people, it's not a big deal. And that's our sales tax. So our sales tax is around about 8.4%. And that's on everything apart from obviously your, your groceries, but that catches a lot of people out, but that's where the majority of our taxes come from. All those tourists that are coming here spending money on the strip, you know, that sales tax definitely goes into our state kitty. I'm not quite sure where they where they spend their tax money on. I'm sure a lot of people that live here have their own opinions. I'm not too sure where it goes. I don't see too many upgrades on the streets. The schools are probably a bit underfunded. But hey, at least we don't get taxed at tax time. We can just skip past the state portion of it, which is good. And then property taxes. Our property taxes are amongst the lowest in the country. If we're to go back to the average home of around about 445,000, the average, um, the average uh, property tax, sorry, I was gonna say homeowner's insurance, but I've already covered that one. The average property tax on, for, say, a 445,000 home is gonna be around about 2,200 a year. Again, you've got to factor in age, depreciation. If it's a new build, maybe the first year is going to be quite low and then it's going to be because it would have been on the assessed value of the land and then it's going to jump up a little bit as well. So if you're looking at history and tax history of homes, if you see a home that was built a year ago and it was really low and then the, the tax went up, that's why, because it's done on the assessed value. If there's no home, it's done on the value of the land. Um, but it, again, that just gives you an average and obviously it does factor in depreciation as well. So it does start to come down. But 2200 on a home, that's the average price of around 445000 isn't too bad. Okay, guys, we're going to move on to the next point quickly now. But just before we do, if you are liking this video or any of my other videos, please go ahead and give me a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe and tap on the bell for notifications and you'll be notified every time I post a new video especially if this is the type of content you want, you're thinking about moving to the area and you want to digest as much content as possible around it, then please do subscribe because this is the type of content I post on a weekly basis. And then also drop me a comment below and let me know what cost is the most outrageous for you. Let me know down in the comments below. Okay, next up is groceries. I tried to look at our receipt the last time we went shopping to just pick out a few different expenditure uh, items on those but the average in terms of the average household is going to probably spend close to around 300 somewhere between 290 and 300 a month on groceries i think we obviously we're a family of seven we've got five kids and then my wife and myself so we spend a little bit more than that on average i mean our average sometimes we're around 500 a month on groceries especially now summertime and the kids are not in school they f i feel like they're, they're eating everything so Again, you've got to bear that in mind with your size, your family size. Some of the things that I picked out, though, in terms of um, our last uh, grocery <laughs> shopping, some of the, uh, I picked out four things. So the bananas were about 60 cent per pound. Uh, the eggs were about $4.40 per dozen. Uh, the 2% milk, which we get for the kids, that was around about $2.50 to $2.70, I think it was. $2.70, $2.69 it was for the gallon. And then my little daughter now has got into almond milk. It's what she always wants for some reason. So we had uh, an almond milk with vanilla, sort of a vanilla flavored almond milk. For a half gallon of that, it was uh, $2.79 as well. So that gives you some rough, uh, sort of rough prices on those. As a compa comparison in terms of grocery spend to the other states, we're actually the second highest um, just because Vegas is landlocked, isn't it? So we don't really produce our own. We're relying on other states. So because of that, I guess it gets factored into the price. So we're on average around the second highest in terms of grocery spend per month and the cost of groceries per month. So again, just something for you to think about. The next cost is gonna be transportation costs. If you look at car registration, and a lot of people say our car registration is quite high. If we'll take my example, my car is about two years old. It's probably worth around maybe 25 to 30,000, I believe. And my registration is around about $500 a year. Now, if you're an older car, then it's gonna go down with age. Uh, a brand new car is obviously gonna be a bit more expensive as well. It's gonna also factor in the value of your car as well. But taking my example, you know, you can try and factor it in for whatever your car is. So mine's a car that's two years old and it's roughly around about, I think about 30,000 is the value of it. 
and it was around about $500, $520 to be exact for my car registration, um, which I, th I believe is high. I feel like it is high, but then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm caught, caught in a position where I have to pay it at the end of the day. So uh, that's probably why a lot of people keep their Californian plates, because some people tell me the car registration fees in California are definitely cheaper than they are here. If we look at car insurance, and again, we're looking at an average here, it's around about $125 a month. I believe, again, our insurance is a bit higher than other states. We have so many accidents, we have so many DUIs, we have so many people driving without insurance that unfortunately it makes the rest of us pay. So an average of around $125 a month. Again, there's gonna be different factors, you know, whatever company you use, your, your own history, your driving history, how long you're licensed, all of those things sort of go into it as well. Gas prices were, when I last went to the, the, the gas, it was around four, last week it was $4.50, I believe. Um, it always seems to fluctuate somewhere between $4.40 and $4.60. Obviously, Costco is a little bit less. I think it was 4.30 when I was there. Um, so again, just factor those things in mind. But it's uh, gas prices are always up and down, always up and down. But that's what the average is at the moment. I think one of the things I think about Vegas is I think a car is really necessary. I think it's hard to get around the city. It's hard to move here and get around the city without having a car. So I think some of those costs in terms of transportation are going to be unavoidable, unfortunately. I mean, we have Uber, we have ride share in here, but again, it's not really a viable option. Those prices are always going to fluctuate. If you're going near the strip, then again, it's going to factor into the prices on the Uber as well. I think we're the second highest, I think we're probably the second most expensive state to own a car after California. And quite often we are really a good place to live in terms of cost of living, but I think our transportation costs are are definitely gonna be up there. And then if we look at health insurance, obviously health insurance is really important. I'm actually looking at changing my own uh, provider at the moment, and I'm actually looking at the marketplace because I'm self-employed. So when I was looking uh, just this week, this sort of average plan was coming out around about $390 per month. Um, obviously that's without employer coverage. If you're gonna be getting coverage from your employer, then that's gonna be completely different. So mine, that I, the one I was looking at, and it was just an average plan, it was around about $390 a month. That was just for myself. That was before I started adding in my wife and my kids as well. Um, and then if you are working with someone that they offer you benefits, then I think obviously it's gonna bring that down as well. But that's the marketplace at the moment. If you're looking at a subsidized premium with a, a government subsidy, that's gonna be around about $190 a month. And then sort of looking at an average, if you're looking at a bronze plan, that could be probably around about 265, up to maybe it could, some plans at $900 plus for the gold plans. And again, it's gonna come down to your own individual circumstances, your own medical history, what's important for you. You know, with my previous plan, what was important was the medication that I was taking at the time. It wasn't a long-term medication, but the medication I was taking at the time uh, ended up being 100% covered on my insurance, but now, I have different needs and so I need to change it up and thankfully I'll be in a position to do that. So I'm just playing around with the marketplace at the moment and sort of seeing the best option. And you know, being a realtor, and I'm sure a lot of other self-employed people as well get this, you get spammed all the time with people offering to look after your health insurance. I'm one of those people that try and do it myself if I can, if I can, if I can work it out myself, I'll try and do it myself. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. But if you have any suggestions for me, because Obviously, we don't have health insurance like this in the UK. We get the NHS, which, you know, pros and cons with that as well. Then definitely uh, let me know your suggestions down in the comments below. But if you're health insurance cost, then, you know, that's going to be the cost there. And then just to give you some comparisons with other cities, if we compare the cost of living in Las Vegas to LA, then it's going to be around about 35% lower. If we compare it with San Diego, it's going to be around about 32% lower. If we compare the cost of living in Las Vegas to Honolulu in Hawaii, it's going to be 46% lower. And then if we compare the cost of living in Vegas with San Francisco, it's going to be, again, around about 43% lower. And that's probably why, in my head, I think most people watching are watching from California or Hawaii, because these are the figures that I'm getting from them when they are talking to me, when they're reaching out. Uh, I always try and make a note of what they tell me. So... There's just a rough comparison, and if you want a comparison with where you're living, then just let me know. You can reach out on 
and my contact details, which are going to be, I'm going to mention them a bit later on as well. If you didn't catch them earlier, then I'll definitely add them again at the end screen as well. So we've covered average income, we've covered the costs. If we're looking now at some of the major employers and major sectors that employ people in this city, we have the strip and we have all of the, the restaurants and casinos and hotels. They're obviously the biggest. They probably account for most of our employees. There's no surprise. We're not overly reliant on that industry, but that is a big industry for the city. And that's where a lot of people start working when they do move here whether that's in management already from previous positions or maybe they're starting in as a waiting position or in a bar, front of house, in a hotel. There's definitely lots of opportunities there. Also, the Clark County School District, we have a shortage of teachers at the moment, but the Clark County School District is a really big employer as well within the city. Then we have different facilities like Amazon. There's various different Amazon warehouses throughout the whole of the Las Vegas area, and they actually offer a decent pay as well. DHL, again, has quite a lot of different um, warehouses here as well. And then the United Healthcare Group, and in fact, I'd, I'd go as far as say medical professionals in general, there's a huge opportunity here as well. Going forward, the city is definitely trying to attract a lot of the tech industries, so there's gonna be a lot of tech opportunities here as well. And if you're wanting to start a business or run a business from Vegas, the state of Nevada and the city of Las Vegas is very business friendly. So you'll definitely find it very easy to start a business here. Um, so whichever route you're looking for, then you know, I'm sure you can find an option that's gonna work for you. Just as a final reminder, if you are thinking about moving to Las Vegas or Henderson, please reach out on my contact details below. I'd love to help you. So definitely take a screenshot. And then however you're comfortable, whenever you're ready, just reach out and we'll have a conversation. I'm very easy to talk to. We can have a really fluid conversation. I want to make it work for you. I want to make it as easy as possible for you as well. So we can have that conversation and then we can go from there. And, hey, if you decide that I'm not a fit for you, I can recommend you to another realtor. Or if you find another realtor that's going to work for you, I just wish you the best on your, on your journey. Those of you who do reach out to me, though, I'll make sure I look after you and give you the best service possible. But until the next time, thank you for watching. You take care.